Hi, my name is Andre de Vet, um, and the topic of my, speak to, uh, of my talk today is 15 years to become an overnight success. Now, I'm not going to speak to you guys today about the how. Everybody else is going to do that. I'm going to speak to you about the why. And what I, when I talk about the why, I'm talking about that thing inside of you as an entrepreneur, the thing that pulses inside of you, that make, wakes you up at 3 o'clock in the morning with a new idea. And the things that you have to do and the things you have to go through. And you'll see a little bit later why I say 15 years to become an overnight success. I uh, made this the topic of my speech because when I stopped med school, I went back home and, you know, everybody was like, what are you doing? And, you know, everybody, my dad was, my dad was the worst. He's like, what am I going to tell my friends you do? That's the worst story, you know. So, you know, you don't do these things for your parents, you do them for yourself. But, uh, you know. Bless him, he was the guy that opened the entrepreneur in me when I, was, when I was still at school. Now, when I was back home, I went and I spoke to some, one of my dad's friends, and he said, don't forget that you're not going to make money overnight. You're not going to get rich with this new idea of yours. Because what I'd done is I was studying, and I was in my third year, and I suddenly woke up one morning in a cold sweat, and I was like, for the next 50 years, I'm going to be speaking to sick people. And I got complete fucking horrifically scared. And maybe at the same time I was reading a book by Napoleon Hill. And also I was taking a look at all the students. They all had money. So I, I was standing in Bloemfontein, go figure. And I f found clothes in Johannesburg at a flea market, very funky jackets. And I took them back to the students and they all wanted them. So I started selling them. So I thought, you know what, this is easy. Much easier than the study thing. So... Um, I was like, okay, I'm going to give this all up, and I'm going to become this very, very budding entrepreneur. You know, I've read these books, and I know everything. And this friend of my dad came to me, and he said, remember, it's going to take 15 years to be over, become an overnight success. And I was like, ah, yeah, whatever, you know. Um, and where I am right now, the reason why it, becomes, why it takes 15 years to become an overnight success is because of what you've got to do inside. It's the journey that you've got to go through. Not that you have to do it to get the money, but because you want to do it because you're alive. Now, I'm going to take you through a little bit of a story and an adventure. The first one I want to do is I want to brag a little bit. We did win it, okay? International app of the year. We, I was in Orlando last week, so forgive my chesty uh, voice, but we did. We won international app of the year. South African app beat 100,000 apps. <laughs> Pretty cool. And we're a small crew, five, four or five developers built the thing. So a really, really small entrepreneurial crowd of people in price check that built this thing. But I was, uh, now after I'd stopped med school and I, my dad said, okay, stop the nonsense there in Bloemfontein, come back home to Joburg. And I'm like, come on, you know, I've got a nice budding little business going here. Everybody, th you know, thinks it's pretty cool. He said, uh, uh, come back. So he introduced me to one of his friends that uh, was a leader in a FMCG pharmaceutical company. And there I was, nine to five, in a car, in traffic every morning. Uh -uh. So what I, what I had to do is change something. And this is very important for you as well. If you go through your life, make sure that if you don't like where you are, change it. You're really not a tree. This adventure is amazing. When I lived in England, I lived in England for four and a half years. Now, you must understand this decision, okay? Five years, you can get a, 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 a visa. Four and a half years, I'd had enough. Darkness, I had to have sun. And then I moved to Asia for two years. But that's another story, okay? And what this did is after three months, I was like, I can't take this traffic in the morning, etc. And I answered an advert, and I went to the center of Joburg. And I went to go and sell encyclopedias door to door because it was better than working nine to five. In the rain, late afternoon, knocking doors. But what it did teach me is a range of things. It taught me the, um, the habit of consistency. You've got to knock every door in that road to find the one person that will give you an appointment. The other thing, of course, is when you're a young entrepreneur and you've got all these business plans and ideas and you're phoning people, Every time somebody says no, firstly, they're saying it K-N-O-W. They don't know enough. But secondly, after that, they are also paying you. So I always used to go with a, with, with a math scenario of 
if I make 100 bucks in the street and I have to knock 10 doors for that, that means every door that they say no, they've given me 10 rand. Break it down to the lowest common denominator. So lessons you learn as you go along. And this is in life, in work, and in relationships. Seriously, you have one shot at this life. Don't sit around in places that you don't want to be. You're not a tree. Now money, somebody once told me, is it gives you freedom of choice, and it really does. Um, if you've got 10 rand in the bank, you don't have a lot of choices. If you have 10 million rand in the bank, you have a lot of choices. That's what we work towards, but it doesn't give you wisdom. Now, it buys you leisure and not wisdom. You take a look at the guys. Now, let's take this thing out a little bit into bigger picture. The, the one that we work in, in the IT, IT arena. Who's the guy, the guy with the more wisdom, Zuckerberg or Jobs? It's a very easy equation. Zuckerberg, well, if you think about it, if it wasn't for an IPO or investors, Facebook still doesn't make money. So it's a nice story, but there's no money yet. Same goes for Instagram and a whole range of the others, whereas Apple makes a vast amount of money, and actually Steve Jobs had to be fired and then come back. If you're sitting around here and you're 28, 29, 30, and you're comfortable, do yourself and do us a favor. Get uncomfortable. Make bigger plans. Throw it all to the wind. I did when I was 27, um, after I'd... Uh, uh, the door-to-door -door story, we then start, went, went to go and build an educational company where I taught kids how to learn. And we built it from a small little two-man office in Hillbrow to an office in Joburg, one in Pretoria, and then one in uh, Bloemfontein. And extended it, and then just in 1993, we sold it, just after Chris Harney got assassinated. Um, I was like, yeah, maybe Civil War, whatever, moved to Cape Town. House in Bloberg Strand, uh, two cars in the garage, parties every weekend. Okay, seriously, we used to hoist the Jack Daniels flag outside the house, and everybody in the neighborhood used to know, parties on at Andre's house, and uh, my brother was a student at Stellenbosch, I'd phone him, and he'd let the word out there, and everybody would just... <laughs> when I was 28, I, I got involved in mobile phones and importing the things, and th everything went wrong. Boom, lost it every single cent. I was living back with a mate of mine in a back room in Joburg. Uh, driving an old uh, V6 uh, Capri. <laughs> nah? So it all changed it, but it makes, it, it, makes you, it makes you uncomfortable, and those are the things that make you hungry. So get uncomfortable um, and enjoy the adventure along the way. You know, I would have been extremely a real pain in the ass if I, if I didn't come down to, down to ground after 28. Um, this one I really like. Though things may come to those who wait, but only left by those who hustle. I swing it around this way, that all things come to those who hustle while they wait. Make a plan, okay? Take a look at the opportunities. They're all around us every single day. All you've got to do is stop a little and just look. See, they're there. And you feel them. You know they're there. Um, and what we did is, a, a, a story I'm going to tell on this one is that our, my first IT company with a bunch of friends of mine, They'd just come back from overseas. They were selling timeshare in Menorca and, Men uh, and Mallorca and had a, a unique way of selling things. It was a handover pitch. What that means is you pitch somebody for something and then you hand them over to something else. And then we took a look and said, wait a minute, the internet is starting and we found the uniform website, co.za. And what it meant is you can go and register a domain name without paying for it for, for three months. So we said, okay, let's do the whole handover thing. So we, st we started a telesales crew. Somebody would take the yellow pages, open it up, and start with a name. We'd see if the domain was registered. We'd register it because you didn't have to pay for it for three months. Then we'd phone the, the, the company. <laughs> and we'd tell them that somebody was looking for your domain name, and they'd like to register it, or do you want it? Yeah. <laughs> you tell me, who's not going to take it? I think probably there are, there are a few thousand of my names in this country that we did through that. <laughs> we did about a million bucks in our first year in, in, in that. It was so much fun. And, you know, there were great domain names that really came up. Great College. Now, if somebody is there from Great College, I apologize. We sold it for 10 grand. I don't know. You know, perceived reality. Make sure that the reality that you create 
is there. You know, just the, the, there's an expression that says, fake it till you make it. The reality is yours. Control it. Now, somebody out there, you take a look at the Groupon deals. Sometimes a Groupon deal is cheaper on price check than on Groupon. But everybody thinks because it's Groupon, it's cheaper. It's not. Very important one, never mistake the power of influence. In um, events like this and in other events, everybody of you that are entrepreneurs and young startups, etc., go and meet the guys that, are, that, 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 that um, are important, that have the connections, walk up to them and say hi. The reason you can do that is at an event like this you can. At a cocktail party, a cocktail party opens it up to anybody, you can speak to anyone. Take a business card, because when you phone them later, you can phone up and say, I met you at the cocktail party. Most of the time, the guy's not going to remember if he did speak to you or not. But he knows you were at the same cocktail party, and maybe he spoke of something of interest, and you can get that influence. But what's important is that we use this on the door-to-door -door stuff, is we'd send people out in a, in a street to go knock a door, not to sell something, and use this when you phone someone. Uh, it, it just sells the appointment. So somebody would knock on the door, tell people about the educational program, and they'd say, but I can't give it to you now. My manager's in the area tomorrow. Can we make an appointment? So suddenly it's an upsell. So it's given to somebody else. So people think there's a more important person coming to speak to me. When we started it, we used to flip it. I'd make the appointments one night, and a friend of mine would go and sell the product. The next night, he'd make the appointments, and I'd be the important one. Nobody knows there's anything different. We use this in, in, uh, what's the, in, in uh, through my career, I went through a stint of selling Herbalife. <laughs> nah, lose weight and lose friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's truly as well. <laughs> but <laughs> when I started it, I learned from one of the top Herbalife guys abroad. They just, just brought it in and I was taking a look at this and it was very exciting. And, he taught me a very important lesson. We used to pitch people, and I'd phone my friends, and I'd say, you know what? I've just come across this great company, and it's a nice product, but I don't know if it's for you. However, let me hand over to my manager, and he'll tell you a little bit more. And then he'd yabber his story on, and we'd get them to an appointment the next day. Think about it. Somebody, now suddenly you feel important because there's a manager that spoke to you. Use this type of stuff and use it very well. Took us three months to get two and a half thousand people in the network underneath me. That's why I had to leave the country. I got to get new, new friends. <laughs> and uh, the power of influence, there's one uh, word I'm just going to drop in the crowd that really works is Gupta. <laughs> Good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. I find it quite a bit that people are building all kinds of new apps and websites and all kinds of things, and they're trying to make sure that everything works. Get it in the market. Don't worry about IP. Don't worry about people copying you. They're going to do that. Get it in the market and be first. We started um, with uh, when text messages came out. I was speaking to somebody about it the other day, and they didn't believe me, but... Uh, when text messages came out, they were free. Do you know that they're still free? It's just the network that has decided to put money on it. It costs nothing. A text message costs nothing. And it was going to be this very exciting thing that when you go abroad, suddenly you can communicate to people over there without having to phone them, and it costs nothing. And then they got clever, and it is the most pure profit, one of the most pure profit businesses in the market currently. And what we did is we were taking a look. MMS was coming out. So they were suddenly you could send pictures and video on a, um, on a phone, and it was tremendously exciting. But the networks didn't know how to make money out of it, so they didn't push it. So I sat with two or three of my designers, and we took premium-rated SMS, and had the premium-rated SMS come in, and we'd send the picture out. And we went to go and see, I went to go and see Nas Buerta and a few of the others, because what we could do is... As soon as a try was scored, you could send a text message in and then get the three seconds of the try being scored. Very exciting stuff. And nobody wanted to do it. Then one of my guys got some adult material, and it took us four months to get to 300,000 requests <laughs> for people wanting adult stuff. You know, on ETV on a Friday night with those adverts sent to this text number? We started that. <laughs> 
Make sure you get to market. We didn't know initially how we can get those things going, but we did. And then in early, late, uh, early 2000, 2002, 2003, when the internet bubble had burst, I had written probably 50 business plans to guys abroad. We didn't have the internet and email as, as prolific as we did now. I used to get Success Magazine and get, read all the stories and find the guys' details and send them business, business plans. None of them ever worked, okay? The bubble burst, everything went wrong. But I got in touch with the guys of, of ideas and thoughts that we had on this side. And then an opportunity came up, and I decided it's time to go. And I went to England, and a very important thing is if you get the chance, go. Get out of your country, go away for a while. There's massive opportunity out there. And another thing us South Africans do really well. You know that in, England, in the U.S., I'm going to send you guys an article, and you can follow me on Twitter, and I'll, I'll, I'll post it, is um, there are about 86,000 South Africans in the U.S. that are doing tremendous amount of things. Um, they're at the head of um, Sequoia. They are, you've got, um, uh, what's the Tesla guy? Elon. Elon. No? Old Pretoria boys, I, they were across the road from where I was at, at school. Yeah, Elon Musk, yeah. All South African guys that are doing phenomenal things. We're a clever bunch. We build phenomenal tech. I see it every time. Firstly, previous one, Price Check app, International App of the Year. Everybody else, niemand het ons genaam, wasn't close to us. We beat them all. But when I went abroad, I realized that this content delivery that we did here would not work over there. But I realized also that our development was way streets ahead of everybody else because we've got to make things happen with very little. We don't have broadband. So we've got to use very, very thin, broad, th thin band. We've got to use different ways of making a plan. And South Africans do. And get out there, travel, read books. Make, you know, open yourself up to the opportunities because they're there. If you take a look and understand the dynamic of quantum dynamic, if you think of something, it's going to come to you. Just start vibrating in that, in, the, in that area. And then while I was abroad, I was riding on the tube one day, and I'm like, what am I doing? And I've been there for a few years. And then I saw prepaid cards. Uh, it's like a MasterCard or a Visa, but it's prepaid. And I suddenly realized, but then in Africa, most of the people don't have um, credit cards. Maybe this is a plan and an idea. So I walked into their office, I found the guys, and I convinced them that, you know, we are the guys in Africa that do every, make everything happen. And uh, we got the rights for Africa. Uh, and three of us took this plan, and I came back to SA, and we wrote a business plan, and we raised about 3 million rand. And the banks, if you speak to them now, they were still taking a look, and they said, they were watching us closely because we're gonna, we were going to get this right. Not one of the big four were, were, were prepared to help us or assist us with this. They were also closed then. And what we did is we, I, we signed up uh, letters of intent for 2 million cards, and we got a uh, um, um, bank license from outside the country that we could bring inside the country. We didn't know we were not allowed to do this. Most people here would go to a bank and say, can you give us a bank license? And they know you've got to go through this and this and this and this and this. And we just didn't know that we couldn't do that. Unfortunately, 2008, the crash happened, and the processes that sat behind this went bust. And then, unfortunately, we had to move on from that. Uh, it did, however, give me the, um, the, the, the chance to go to Singapore, and I launched two card programs over there. I'm going to step a little bit aside, and I want you to remember three things when you write a business plan. And now, you've got to write a business plan. This is very, very important. And the reason why you write the business plan is firstly for you so that you can understand what you're trying to sell. Because you get all this excitement and you have it all over the place. But if you don't put it down on paper, you're not exactly sure where it goes and where it starts. It'll show you how to start something, how to build on it, and where the exit is. Because your investors are looking for three things. They're looking for the idea. What is it? What are you trying to sell? They want to know who are the people that are going to make this happen. And then they want to know how they'll get their money back. If you can't answer one of those three, then go back to the drawing board and make, go and rewrite your business plan or go and find the answer. Because then you'll really, 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 really do well. And in, most importantly in your business plan, impart your passion. You're excited about this stuff. I know. You wake up at 3 and 4 in the morning. I do. 
And when you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you roll around and you can't go to sleep, hint, stand up, go and write something down. Because then it goes out of your mind and it, it goes and lies down. But you know it's the most exciting feeling in the world when you've got that idea and it, and it pumps through you. But don't stay away from where the things are happening. 80% of success is showing up. Go to that meeting, even if it means climbing on a plane and flying to Joburg for a five-minute meeting. We did that recently, and one of the big, big clients and one of the networks we were dealing with were like, you flew up for this meeting? And I was like, yeah, that's how we do things. And we've now got that uh, contract, and it's coming through. Um, I was approached for a position in Singapore, and I had to fly to Hong Kong, and I was very thin on cash. So I sold a gold Kruger and that my dad had given me. And I went. And I, you know, it, it all added to my career. But make sure that you get there. Make the flight. Take the chance. Um, and it taught me how to <coughs> do business in different, co different communities, pl places like China and Singapore, etc. And I want you to read this very nicely because this is to all of you. The dreamers, it's the dreamers that move the world. Practical men are so busy being practical. They cannot see beyond their own lifetime. Think about guys like Steve Jobs. No, not even Steve Jobs. Everybody in here, there are people here that are going to make the changes to the world. If you're 28, 29, 30, if you're 39, 40, if you're comfortable, get uncomfortable. Everything is sweetened by risk. Try to do something that's illegal every now and again. <laughs> Lay foundations for the drama. And remember that work is too important to play. Steve Jobs used to believe very strongly in the dreamers. And I'll bring you back again that 15 years it took Steve before they fixed Apple again from the time that it was all bust up. And this is how you've got to live. Command like a king. Create like a god. Make it in your head. Build it. But work like a slave. And remember that only the mediocre are always at their best. So come on, let's go and do things that they write books about. Thank you very much.